Hi, my name is Steve, and today I want to take you through my workflow for taking this action figure and turning it into a 3D animated asset that you can use for video compositing and game engines. So with that, we're going to take a look at some of the tools I use, some of the ways I go about it. This isn't meant to be a full step-by-step -step tutorial, but I'll have links down below to all the different YouTube videos, all of the software, all of the plugins, all of the parts and pieces that I use as I take you through the process for turning this action figure into something that can now be used within a computer generated video. How are you doing? Now some of the tools I'm going to be using along the way are I have purchased myself. So all of this can be done with mostly free applications and free tools, but there are some parts and pieces that require purchases. There are some software and plugins that make it much easier if you make a purchase of them. But I will be giving you the free options as well as what I use and what I've purchased. And all of this I've purchased with my own money. I'm doing this on my own, no one's sponsoring this. So the applications I use are just what I have found. So one of the first tools you need in order to take an action figure and convert it into a 3D model is a 3D scanner. And I have the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. I've done some previous videos on this, some of my use cases. I've done some comparisons with another 3D scanner. So if you want to see any of that, you can check it out on my channel. But I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is do a 3D scan. And then once we've got this scanned, we'll go into the different computer software applications that I use and continue the process for taking the scanned object and turning it into an animated character. So now that I have the scanning completed, I've brought the model into the Creality Scan software. I've gone through the process of merging two pieces together to get the bottom of the feet and I've already taken this through all the steps within the Creality Scan software, applied the images that you can see where the image texture is kind of uh, not as ideal. It doesn't have all of the correct image textures applied. It picked up a little bit of the light reflection. And this is pretty typical for 3D scanners trying to get every detail within the model. So that's something I will be fixing later on in another piece of software. Another thing to keep in mind is filling holes. So this model, there are some holes down in the feet that I decided not to fill here within the Creality Scan software. We're gonna do that in the next steps. So I'm just going to output an OBJ file and then move on to the next piece of software. So the next piece of software is Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is a free program on Mac and Windows. Really good for filling holes. You can do some things with brushes to add some details to your object. You can also use it for you know, setting the origin point and orienting the object correctly. But in this case, I am just going to use it for filling the holes. And one of the things that this does a really nice job is you can add a planar hole, which is just a flat surface hole, or a smooth surface, which it tries to do somewhat of a rounded, smooth surface. And so Mesh Mixer is my go-to tool really for filling holes and doing that very quickly as they have an inspector you can auto fill the holes, and if that doesn't work, you still have the ability to select the individual holes and fill them 
depending on whether you want a planar or a curved surface. And then once I've got all the holes filled, I am going to take the model and save it out as a OBJ. This one I am going to save as its own mesh mixer file, um, but you can also overwrite the original uh, OBJ file that you created out of Creality Scan. I am not going to do this with the vertex coloring. I have noticed if I take the color information out of Mesh Mixer and apply it to each of the vertexes, I do see a shift in the color. So I'm going to keep the original color images that I got from the Creality Scan software. And now that all the holes are filled, we've got a nice solid object. We're going to take this over to the next piece of software. So now I want to focus on the images and the image details. And so I am using Photoshop Elements, but you can also use any free image editing application. So that could be GIMP. I know there's some other tools out there, uh, but since I have Photoshop Elements, that is the tool I prefer to use. And in this case, I'm opening up the PNG image that was exported with the OBJ object out of Creality Scan, and I'm going to apply a sharpening to this. Now you have to be a little bit cautious with how much sharpening you apply. Sometimes it can look a little bit fake. Sometimes it can bring in some artifacting into the images. So I just sometimes like to crispen up some of the details. You could do some color correction, but I've also found when you're doing that on these unwrapped objects, that can be quite challenging. And you might also be tempted to do some of the image cleanup in here and do some of the cloning of the image, but that's gonna be the next step. So in here, we're just gonna take the PNG file, do a little bit of sharpening, save that out right over the top of our original PNG file, and now we're going to take and bring everything into Blender. So here we are in Blender. I know Blender is a free program. Again, Mac, Windows, very powerful software. But what we're going to use it for initially, the first stage I like to do is using this for texture painting. And it's much easier to do texture painting because you can do it directly on the model itself. And I do a lot with the clone brush tool. So if you're doing any, uh, going over any of the tutorials out there, take a look at texture painting using the clone brush tool, but essentially works very similar to the clone tool in your photo editing applications. You select a portion of the model that you want to clone. You can change the brush size and you can now go over those parts of the model that the imaging didn't quite pick up correctly. Maybe it's not showing the right color. And I just go through the entire object and clean it up piece at a time. And it's just so much easier to do this directly on the model itself and very simple to do within the Blender application. And then once you're done cleaning everything up, one thing you do want to make sure is in Blender to save the image textures. If you just save the uh, object, the OBJ file, it won't save the images and all the cleanup that you just did will be lost. So make sure you save the image files and then you can just uh, exit out of Blender because you don't need to save the object unless you want to. I do here because I also use Blender to set the origin point for my character. So once we've got the model cleaned up, all the color image looking the way we want it, in this case, I am going to now move to another piece of software for starting to add bones and preparing the model for animation. So when it comes to rigging the character and adding bones and getting it ready for making it something that can be animated within the 3D applications, there's a couple of options. 
In this case, since the action figure is a human figure, I'm going to use AccuRig. I found AccuRig to be very easy to use. They offer some free motion capture uh, animations that you can apply directly to the character and export and is a very good tool that I have found very easy to use. It's free on my computer and you're going to import the OBJ file that you exported from Blender. You're going to set it up. You're going to you know, apply the rigging. It's going to let you make some slight adjustments. It shows you you know, where the points are, how they fit onto the character, and makes it very easy, but it's so much of the process is automated. In this case, I'm not going to be adding any fingers because of the way this model is. There's no need for me to move the fingers. And we're just going to let it do its process. And when it's finished, you'll see you now have a character that can be completely animated. And AccuRig has some sample poses and sample animations that you can apply. And then once you're done, you can now take and export this, selecting Blender as your output file type. It's going to save it as an FBX. And then uh, we're going to take this and open it up in Blender. But before you apply this in Blender or open it in Blender, you're going to want to go to the ActoCore website because they have a section that you can go to specific for Blender in which they have some plugins you can download to open these files and ensure that they import into Blender correctly. There's also a couple of add-ons. I've paid for AutoRig Pro. I do like the plugin AutoRig Pro, Pro for Blender because it offers so many features around non-human characters, ways of applying different types of motion capture to an already rigged character. So with that, if you have AutoRig Pro, you can get a free download. But if you are using Rigify, which is built into Blender and is a free option, there's some tools that are related to just the uh, free set up for Blender download. So you don't necessarily have to purchase the Rigamap tool and just be aware that you can do this with either AutoRig Pro or Rigify within Blender. There's also some very good tutorials down at the bottom that walk you through all the steps. So this is a great resource where versus me taking you through every step, they have some excellent tutorials on how to import this into Blender, apply the motion capture, apply the bones, and get your character all set up within Blender for animation. So next up, we're gonna move over to Blender and go through that process. So here we are in Blender, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, I have this uh, CC IC tools that you'll see some tabs, and this is the download the free download and the install from the AccuRig website. And this is where you want to go to import the FBX uh, file that you exported from AccuRig. This is set up to help bring that in more effectively into Blender. So those are the tools you want to use and that is a way to import everything into Blender. You'll bring in your character, you'll still have all your uh, textures, but now it has all the bones in place with the character. So now you have to apply those bones to the character to be able to start doing animations. And for this, I am using AutoRig Pro, as I mentioned. You can also find tutorials for how to do this using Rigify, and I'll have links to those uh, websites that I've used. But it's really going through following the instructions on the AccuRig website that will take you through all of the parts and pieces, all of the uh, easy to follow instructions. And then once you have your character fully rigged, ready to animate, you can export a 
motion capture file. Some of these are available for free on Octacore. They also have some that are paid. Some of these you can get from websites like Mixamo and there's other motion capture pre-made animations. And this is another area why I purchased AccuRig Pro because it has the ability to retarget the motion capture bone animation to the rigged character. So when you apply that, you can now go through and you will see that it automatically applies the motion capture to your character. And you can, of course, do your own animation and poses and your own uh, modifying of the character and now start doing animations and 3D compositing and incorporating this into your video and game engines. So I hope you found this video helpful, showing you some of the different methods, tools, applications, ways of going about using a 3D scanner for creating animated characters of real world objects. But what have you done? Have you found better methods, different tools? Are there other things that you've used that I didn't cover? Please leave a comment as I'm learning this along the way. Would love to hear from you to see what other techniques you're using. And with all of that, if you enjoyed this, would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one.